This video is going to talk a little more about using arrays in C Sharp and Unity. Um, I'm going to be focusing on using parallel arrays as well as looping through arrays content. So first let's talk about parallel arrays. And what I mean by that is having more than one array to keep track of a few different data types. So in my last video of basic arrays, I did have um, one as an example keeping track of some food items when I was trying to decide what to have for dinner. And so that array is called food, and it is of type string, so only strings can be stored in this array. So let's say I wanted to keep track of the calories for each food item as well. And so what I can do is set up a second array. This one I have as type integer. I called it calories, and then because they are integers, I have each item separated by a comma, but not in quotes. So I can have these two arrays. Each one has six elements, so they match up. This first element, which would be element zero, index zero, would be pizza with 520 calories, for instance, and sushi, 400 calories. These are made up numbers. My calories are probably not accurate. But what you do is you use the same index for each array to access multiple collections. So for instance, if I wanted to access the um, food two, that would be pasta. So that'd be zero, one, two. And then calories two would be zero, one, two, it would be 480. So you can just keep track of one index number and apply that across both arrays. And you can do certainly more than two. I'm just showing two. So let's take a peek at that, how that would be implemented in Unity. For this example, I'm going to be using the UI to show our information. So already I have a Unity project. I created a text field called food text and a text field called calories text. And just for now, I put the word food and calories in there. I'm going to be adding a few things to the screen, so I just started it there. So let's go over to the arrays C Sharp script I already created and add a few things. So I know I want to use the UI, so I'm going to add that in. I need to add the UI directive. And then, um, first of all, let's think about the arrays, and then I'll go backwards and add the text fields we would display it in. And I'm not going to be using update. I'm just going to go ahead and delete that. So here, um, let's set up the arrays. So my first array is food, and it's of type string. And I jumped ahead here so you didn't have to see me type in six items. And I'm going to do the same with my calories. Now this one is going to be a type integer. And if you notice, each of these arrays have six items. So they will have index zero through five. So I've got my, my arrays. Let's also have a number to keep track of the index. I'll just start it at zero. Now, since I would like to show it on the screen using UI, I need to set up my text fields. I'm going to go ahead and put these up top here. I'll call one display food, and they are type text. If you're unsure how to use the UI, I do have a, a few separate videos on how to work with those if you need a little uh, refresher or if you're new to that. Okay, so I have my two text fields, display food, display calories. I set up my arrays. One is food, one is calories, and my index is going to start at zero. I'll keep track of this one variable and I'll use that for both. So for start, let's just simply display the current item index of food and calories. So it would be the first item. 
So I'm going to refer to my um, text field display food dot text equals food current item. And my other one, display calories dot text would be calories current item. But look, it's going to give me an issue. And when there's an error, you can look for a clue. It says it cannot implicitly type convert type into string. So the problem is that this array is holding an integer and I'm trying to put it into a string. So all I need to do is add on dot to string. And it will take that integer, convert it to the value to a string so we can put it into that text field. All right, so let's jump back over into Unity, connect these up and see if it displays. And when it runs, it should show pizza and 520. I've already connected my arrays script to this empty game object I called script. I'm gonna go ahead and click on that and notice there are spots for my display food and display calories. So I can either drag these items over to that or I can select them by clicking on this little circle. So I'm going to go to scene. Um, that food is food text and the calories is calories text. Also notice that in my inspector, because my arrays were public, I can see the values here. I can see what food is. It shows the size of the array as well as the values and I could click down to see the calories as well. So it's kind of an interesting way to be able to access the information or verify without having to go back to your script. We're actually not going to use these. So let's hit play and see what it looks like. So it says pizza 520. Okay, that's what we want, right? So at this point, it's not doing much for me. I'd like a way, let's say, to go through my list and go forward and backward through it and check the, the food and the calories. So let's talk about how to loop through an array going forward as well as backward. Okay, looping forward through an array. So if our array looks like this, and I'm just going to use food as the example, we have our six items starting to count at zero, one, two, three, four, five, right? And what we can do is have our array set up here. I have my current item variable here. And looking at it, I should have said integer, but it has current item is zero. This is just kind of roughing in. And let's say we have a method that's triggered by a button. And so I'm making a method, let's say, called go forward. So let's say every time I push the button, it'll run the things inside of here. So if current item starts at zero, right? So let's say this is the beginning. It would be at pizza. Now, if I run go forward, it first goes here to current item plus plus. So it adds one to current item. If the current item is greater than food length minus one, and what that is, food dot length gives us the number of elements in an array. So in this case, that's six minus one. So as long as current item is less than food length, so we don't want it to be six, five would be fine, then it's fine. But if it gets greater than food length minus one, which would be five, then what it's gonna do is reset it to zero. But for now, current item is still less than food length, so it's gonna skip this, and if it writes debug log food current item, it would say burgers. Now moving on, if we do it again, current item plus plus, it adds one to current item, it goes to two. It's still not greater than food length minus one, so we're fine, and it will write pasta. Okay, if we push the button again, it goes in, it adds one to current item, which is three. Three is still not greater than food length, so we're fine and it would write tacos. So we run it again, current item adds one, so now it's four. 
Four is still not greater than food length, so we're fine. So it would write soup. So if I click the button again, it would add one to current item right here. So it's five. It's still not greater than food length minus one because five is not greater than five. So we're still fine. And it would write sushi. So let's say I click the item again. Now, if I add one to current item, the number would be six. And six would give us an index out of range error. So what we need to do is reset this to the beginning. So what, that's what this if statement does. So it's checking if current number is greater than food length minus one, and that's six is greater than five, then what it does is resets current item to zero, and then it can display it, and then it would be just fine. So it this if statement catches an out of index error, and then it would allow you to continue on with no problems. So let's take a peek at how this would work in Unity. So I want to make a method to go forward. So I'm going to go ahead and stay within the same class. I'm just going to go here, hit enter a couple of times, and I'm going to go ahead and make a new method. And I'll call this next button. How about? And for those of you who are not sure, void just means it's not returning any value. It's just going to run what's in there. Public is necessary so I can connect it to a button. All right, so what I need to do, if I click on the next button, I want to increase current item index by one. And I can do that just by current item plus plus. And then I want to check to see if we are at the end or not. And I'm doing that with the if statement. And I'm checking to see if current item is greater than, and since I'm using two arrays, I can just pick one of them. I'm going to go ahead and use food. Food length minus one. So the food.length is six. Since the final index is five, that's why it's food length minus one. And if it is, if it gets to the end, I just want to reset current item to zero. And then at the end of that, I can display however I would like. So in fact, I can just copy this and paste that here. Okay, so let's try that. I'm gonna make a button and see if that works. So the next button should work. It should then um, go forward. If I hit the end, it resets it to zero and I could keep going. I'm gonna go ahead and save this. I'm gonna go to Unity and make a button. I'm going to just go insert UI button. How about, I'm going to make the next one on this side. Maybe I could just put it, put it down here. I'm going to name it since I'll have a couple of buttons. I'll call it next button. And I want to change the text on it. So I can click on the little triangle next to it, click on text. And how about I have this say, um, I could say forward or next. I'm going to do a couple of these to make it look like it's that direction. Okay, now to connect this button, I go ahead and click on it. I scroll down to the on click section. I hit plus to add an event. I need to select what object has the script I'd like to select from, and it is this script object here. And I can either drag it down there or I can click on this little circle thing. I want to grab it from the scene and it is my script. And then I choose my method. So for this one, it is in my arrays class and it is next button. Okay, so whenever I click this, my next button method should run. So let's try it out. Okay, so when I click next, I should go to the next item in my array. Burgers 250. Okay, so that should be the next pair. Keep going through. 
sushi, this would be at the end. So if I didn't wrap it around to zero, if I clicked again, it would give me an error. But let's see what happens. Okay, it looped around a pizza. That's great. Now it's possible, in fact, on the back button, I think I'm going to let it error out and you could see what type of out of index error you get for that. So let's make the, the reverse one and it's very similar. So for looping backward through an array, it's very similar to looping forward, um, but of course we're going backwards. So let's say we're starting on five, and it, let's say I have a button that is called go backward, and every time I run it, it's going to subtract one from the current item. So let's say I clicked on the button, it's going to sub subtract one from current item. So now current item is four, and it checks to see if current item is less than zero because what we want to do is make sure that it doesn't end up in this spot right here. We, if it hits the end, we want it to go back to five. So in this case, if it's less than zero, because zero is fine, then it's going to set the current item to food length minus one, which in this case would be five. So in this case, it is now four. It would then write soup. Let's say I click that button again. Now it's three because I subtracted one from current item and it's still not less than zero, so it would write tacos. Clicked that button again, it subtracts one, current item is now two, still not less than zero, so it would write pasta. Same thing again, one less burgers. Okay, zero goes down to zero. Zero is not less than zero. Right, so it's still fine, and it would write pizza. But if I clicked it again, now current item is negative one. This if statement is gonna fix it because I don't want it to be indexed out of range. If current item is less than zero, which negative one is less than zero, it's then gonna set current item to food length minus one, which is five, and then it, I would be okay with displaying sushi. So I'm gonna go ahead and show this in Unity, but I'm going to leave out this if statement to show you what happens if we didn't have that in there. Okay, so just like the other one, I'm gonna go ahead and make a new method. I'm just calling them, this will be back button, that would be fine. So the first thing I want to do is, if I'm going backwards, I want to remove one from the current index. And like I said, I am going to check the less than zero. I need to add that in, but I'm just going to skip that for now and show you what kind of error you get if you don't do that. And then I want the same display. Okay, so if I go backwards and I'm trying to display this, and current item has a negative number, it's going to give us an error. So I want to show you what that looks like. Okay, first I need to make a button though, right? So I'm going to go ahead and make a um, new button. Call it back button. Change the text to back and connect it up. So I'm going to click on my button, scroll down on the inspector, check the on click add uh, method. So I want to choose where the script is, and in this case it's the scene script. And I need to choose my class and my method called back button. Okay, so let's try this out. All right, so here we are. I'm gonna go ahead and go forward a couple. Let's go back. Now this is my first one. So if I click back again, because I didn't put that if statement in there, this should give me an error. Okay, notice in my console, index out of range exception. Index was outside the bounds of the array. And so every time I do this, it's giving me a problem. And notice it's not changing here either. So that will give you issues. So that's where, let me hit stop, let's fix that. I want to add that if statement. So in this case, I want if 
current item is less than zero because zero is a valid index number. Then what I want to do is reset current item to food dot length minus one. And once again, I just picked one of the two arrays since they're the same length. And what's great about this is then I don't have to hard code a number here. If I ended up having more items in the food later or the calories, then um, it would still work. I don't need to go back into my code and change it again. So let's save that and check and see if that fixed things. Let's go forward a few, back, and it seems to work fine, right? Pizza was the first one, right? Goes back around to sushi. So that's how you'd use parallel arrays as well as looping forward and backward through arrays.